This is Pro Series Off Topic. Welcome back to Off Topic. This is episode 48, and we are talking about um, luck today. And this is going to be a strictly audio based podcast episode. So if you are listening on YouTube or on a podcast form, please make your way over to my social media. That is Eric Doman Designs on pretty much everything on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. It's Eric Doman DZN. But there is a, a word or a phrase that kind of gets me mad when people are judging someone off of pure luck. Um, That term's thrown around a lot. You know, we've talked about it many times. And when you see someone's good side on social media, you're like, ooh, they're so lucky. Or that was pure luck that they got that. Um, So this is what this whole episode is going to be about. I'm going to break it down into six different um, topics and reasons on why it's unfair to say that and throw that term around. But before we get into that, we will talk about country music and then After country music, we will talk about the Pro Series this week. I shot it last week. It was an in-person episode. I know we haven't had one in a long time, so this is a good one. This is a Pittsburgh-based one. It's a company that is just starting out, and if you are in the home renovation world, this is a huge, huge marketing tool for you. It is so smart. Um, I won't completely go into it on here. I'll kind of do a brief thing, kind of like a teaser thing at the end to get you listening to the episode, but that will come out this Tuesday. Um, it's a new company coming to the market and hopefully after it goes, gets into Pittsburgh and becomes successful, it will trickle its way all around, all around the country and the world. It is a great tool for not only the people in the, uh, renovation world, but also homeowners. Um, so stay tuned to that, but let's get into the main topic. The main topic this week is a phrase that I can't stand. And it is something that is judged off of someone i think we we talk about this a lot in the pro series about social media and how um you're seeing only the good in social media and what people want you to see um so you don't see the the behind the scenes um hard working hours um the bloods the blood the sweat the tears like what everybody says you know you're, you're judging them based off of that good picture or that good um you know if you're a real estate agent, a bunch of solds or whatever, you know, success and the achievements. um, um, But judging someone's success solely based on luck, it's a flawed and unfair approach for several reasons. And I broke it down into six different reasons and we'll go over them. And um, hopefully this um, someone out there is also maybe gets that term thrown around to them a lot that they're lucky or Maybe they think they're bad luck, um, which they have a lot of bad luck, which we'll get into too in one of the reasons. So let's get into number one. Um, It discounts hard work and effort. You know what? That's kind of easy. That's an easy number one. Um, When you say luck, it kind of diminishes what what they just did. And we will talk about that also in um, reason number three. But success often requires um, effort. Um, dedication and perseverance judging someone's success and luck undermines the hard work that they they put into achieving that goal um, it it discards their their countless hours of practice learning skill development and the the continued um, work that they are putting in to achieve that goal um, I think we've all achieved a goal and maybe been judged off of maybe it, it was easy for you or um, it's shown as easy to you and they kind of say, um, well, you're so lucky that this happens or, um, and it's, it's just an edible. Everybody always has something like that in their life. Number two, it ignores the personal agency. Um, by attributing success to luck, we imply that individuals have little control over their outcome. That diminishes the importance of personal agency, the ability to make choices, set goals, and take actions that shape one's destiny. Um, It overlooks the role of determination, resilience, and decision-making in achieving success. I kind of think we think luck is this magical power that kind of just drives that person's success or kind of plops them right into the achievement category. Um, so saying that, that they're lucky kind of ignores their, their personal, um, well-being, the person agency, um, next one, number three, we kind of just 
talked about that in reason number one, but it undermines the achievement of the person. When success is dismissed as luck, it is diminishing in, um, it diminishes this, the individual's achievements. You know, it brings them down. Why, you know, they're trying to celebrate this goal, this achievement, and you're going to say, oh, that was pure luck, or they're lucky. You know, that. just think about how that would affect you if that is said to you. It suggests that their accomplishments are merely the result of a random chance. Like we just said, it's a magical power that they're just plopped into the achievement category. They, they just get that goal. And that could be demoralizing for those who may put that hard work into reaching that goal. Um, and I, like I said, I'm very big in manifesting and we'll talk about that in the next um, reason as well. But if you merely think that someone has good luck, it's going to, it's going to put you in a, in a mindset that you aren't lucky, that you are not going to see these different um opportunities come to you and you're gonna it, you're basically gonna ignore them because you're not thinking you're lucky you're not you're not there's no luck in your life so why will there be any success in your life um so that's that's a huge thing um and then f- number four fostering compliancy believing that success is solely a matter of luck can lead to um compliancy if only one attribute their failures to bad luck and their success in good luck they may become passive and unwilling to take responsibility for their actions the mindset hinders personal growth and development and this is exactly what i just said i'm huge into manifesting i'm huge into positive mindset and that's why i've had a lot of mindset coaches on the podcast i think mindset is a huge huge driver into success in advancing your career but if you i think we all know someone that always thinks they're bad they have bad luck or um everybody else is lucky and not them and you could see how they are in their career you could see how they are in just achieving goals and for the most part those people don't even have goals because they just think goals why even have a goal if it's not going to work out for them um, but if you see, um, there's so many people and there's so many different stories that you see of, you know, maybe there's someone that is an addict out there and they, they kind of have that mindset cause it kind of downs their, their, their personal, um, well being. And then when they go through rehab or they go through their, their process and they have this new outlook on life, they have this new positive mindset and think that they're, it was proven to them that they're lucky that they they got through this and that they're living life and they have a second chance and that is so inspirational that just to be able to show someone one of their live stories and how they got through it and it, it kind of changes your outlook on luck um, and how you could switch up your mindset so quickly well not quickly um, with hard work and dedication and um, create your own luck. Um, number five, it creates a negative perception. Exactly what we're just saying. Judging success as luck can create envy, resentment, and sense of injustice among individuals who feel that their efforts are not recognized or achieved. I think there's so many people out there that they're the you know the quote unquote eors of the world that kind of are down. They you know they're always negative. Um, it's decisive in your mindset and it pits people against each other, um, based off the perceptions of advantages and disadvantages and kind of weighing it all out. People with that negative outlook are never going to be, um, lucky or achieve any goal because, you know, they are already going into it with a negative mindset thinking, Hey, I'm not lucky, so I'm not going to achieve this goal. So why even have this goal? Um, number seven discourages the risk taking and, and innovation if success is an attribute solely to luck, it may discourage individuals from taking risks or pursuing individual ideas. Um, they may fear that their efforts will be um, dismissed or overshadowed by um, a notion of luck, but leading to the um, challenge, the, the status quo, or the um, pursuit of, of, of their goal is a huge thing. Um, the discouraging uh, risk-taking is... A huge part of luck. I think people that are l- lucky or what you're going to say, quote unquote, lucky 
are the ones that see the opportunities, see the risks, see the hard work, and kind of take that head on and and want to um, achieve that and want to kind of conquer that goal. Um, but inclusion, judging someone's success based on luck, it oversimplifies a complex phenomenon and failures of recognizing that multi-factored, multifaceted factors that contribute to achievement. Instead, it is an essential to acknowledge that and celebrate hard work, determination, and personal agency that underpin individual success while also recognizing the role of luck within a broader context. I hope this sixth step of the reasoning on why I really hate the term luck in when you're judging someone's success or judging someone's life or judging someone's goals um, helps. And I think there's someone out there that also is um, struggling with this or get this term thrown around a lot. And they're probably sitting there like, well, they don't see what I'm doing. I think it's something that you... You kind of switch your mindset and kind of think, well, they haven't seen or they don't have that positive mindset. So maybe they they aren't the person to judge or in the right um, mindset to even judge you. So hopefully this helps a little bit. Let's get into um, now into country music. A lot of this week came out. um, The main couple... Um, which we'll talk about this big, this first one is Casey Musgraves came out with her much anticipated, um, album deeper. Well, I took a listen to it all. It's definitely back to old Casey, back to, um, golden hour, um, pageant material, all that stuff back in the day. I think her last, um, star cross, I think it was called that album was just, it was just strange. I'm a huge Casey fan, but that album was just odd i think it was a risk that she wanted to take or just a part of her career that she wanted to take um it, it didn't work out the best way but i think deep well is definitely back to her roots um I, but i still think the two songs that she had previously released are the the strongest on the album that is deeper well and too good to be true i think a close second is the architect i think the architect is going to be a fan favorite and uh, maybe an album cut i don't know if she'll release it as a single but Definitely check out that album. It's a great one. It just came out on Friday. Um, not a country song, but has a country artist to it. Um, off of this Happiness Bastards um, album from the Black Crows, they had Lainey Wilson on the Wilted Rose song, um, which is really cool. I think it's cool that Lainey kind of, kind of is going into a different direction and kind of she knows her artistry now and kind of hopping into a, a new genre and kind of getting... Um, her fans into a different genre or maybe finding new friends into a different genre but their voices actually match really well I thought when I clicked on it it was going to be kind of a a strange thing Um, but it was I was pleasantly surprised by it Um, next up Tyler Hubbard came out with another song this week um, off of his strong album that will be coming out soon and that is Turn Um, pretty good I still think Wish You Would um, is the top song right now. There's only uh, five songs that are out because the album comes out April 12th, but I think it's a strong album. I think he's doing well. We talked about Brian Kelly last week, the other half of Florida Georgia Line. Um, next up, Kenny Chesney, Born, um, came out with another song, Wherever You Are Tonight. Kenny, this album, I think, is becoming one of his better albums of the past, you know, <sighs> like, last three or four albums or last 10 years um i think he had maybe one or two songs off of each album in the past 10 years that were good and then everything else dropped off but so far he's it's pretty strong um rally green came out with his own cover of way out here great job i think it fits his voice perfectly i think it's a great song and i think he should honestly release this to country radio as we see fast car that blew up last summer i think covers are in and it's a great way to get a whole new uh generation hopping on board to old country or just hopping on board to an old song kind of get them discovering a older older artist that was great um go check him out and on way out here chase beckham came out with another song bad for me um the chorus is great 
um, the rest of the song needs to grow on me. I think Chase Beckham has a really cool voice, and it, it, he's coming in at a good time on country. It just he's just not popping off. If you don't, if you've heard his name, you don't remember where he's from. He was a winner on American Idol a few years back. Um, had a song twenty three on um, country radio, and it is at number eight right now. But um, which is slowly climbing up. So I'm surprised he came out with a new song, but. Go check that out. Tennille Towns came out with a new song called Thing That Brought Me Here. Tennille, one thing she does really well is storytelling songs that are very, very personal, very, very, um, you know, sad or um, just very realistic. And that's what this song is. I don't think it is as good as her Jersey on the Wall song, but um, I think it will it will hit with her audience i don't think country radio will hit very well with it but um go check that one out ray lynn came out with another song funny girl ray lynn is at a um coming out with i think she doesn't care about country radio anymore and she's just kind of releasing songs based off of what her what she likes in her life and based off of what fans like and i could respect that and i think the funny girl song is pretty good um uh next up willie nelson came out with another song and um it's called the border great storytelling song i know i keep saying storytelling but that's that's the only way to describe it and that's the best thing about country music is storytelling for the most part um but go check that song out all about the border it's a great song willie um it's great to hear from him i think it's this is gonna be like his 75th album or something i might be wrong but i think i saw that on the on the um uh internet this week uh and then Ernest came out with another single off of his new new um, album coming out called Nashville, Tennessee. As you know, he is a Nashville native, as is friend Jelly Roll. And he came out with a new song called I Went to College, I Went to Jail. Um, kind of poking at their past. You know, Ernest went to college while Jelly Roll went to jail. And that's the whole story of the song. And kind of talking about um, their time in college and time in jail. And it, it's a really cool song. I hope they released the country radio cause it's a good lighthearted song. That's fun to sing to. Um, and it's just, I could just see them singing on stage and to be so funny, but also really cool to see, um, them tell their story. Um, next up David nail, David nail is an artist. I know I talked about Jake Owen last week being underrated, but I think David nail is also a very underrated artist. And this song is you could tell it's a very personal song about his grandpa. If I could call is the name of the song. I think it would do very well in country radio. If country radio, um, takes a grasp at it. Um, I think it's a very good song to, I think everybody kind of has someone in their life that kind of lives through this. And I want to let you to listen to this and kind of, um, take your own personal opinion off of it, but it's such a good song about his grandparents and the stories they used to tell and, uh, their love story and all that stuff. Um, great song. Um, Warren Zider, an artist that is blowing up the charts right now. And uh, an artist that is really, really up in his game. Heartbreaker is a song that he already released, but he came out with the piano version, which is incredible. Um, definitely go check that out. I know his, Pretty Little Poisons at number two this week. Hopefully he gets his first number one um, with that. And then last up, which I think is probably the best song of the week, and that is with Ben Rector and Haley Witters. Um, The song is called Color Up My World. It is the the most, um, I want to say like uh, 60s or 70s country. It's very twangy. It's very um, heavy banjo. and fiddle type of thing and it, it sounds awesome i love how Haley witters is kind of laying into the old um country sound and i don't know why she hasn't really popped off on country radio no she had um everything she ain't on media based chart it never really popped off last year but it is um that's a great song and then she has one in love right now um, and she has another song with fill up your cup with, um, little big town, which go check that one out. But Haley Witters is a great artist. Ben Rector is a great artist. So color up my world is a great song. Go check that one out. And let's get into country music media based chart this week. Number five, Morgan Wallen, man made a bar with Eric church. Number four, Thomas Rhett with Morgan Wallen, mama's house. 
Number three this week, Hardy, Truck Bed. Number two, Warren Zider, Pretty Little Poison. And the number one song this week is Kane Brown, I Could Feel It. Looking down at this country uh, media base chart, I see that Beyonce kind of entered the uh, country radio landscape, which is kind of cool because I know there's a lot of people fighting um, that she they don't want her on here. Um, but Texan Hold'em is um, on 39 right now, um, which I think will go up. I th- I'm very curious with the CMT awards announced and ACMs coming up as well if she will she will uh perform the song and i think if she does it's going to blow up the country chart and i mean she's already blowing up the billboard hot country chart and i think that says a little bit more than the country radio chart i think country radio has a lot of politics into it and it's it's harder to get a number one nowadays if you aren't supported by the industry or supported by the heavy hitters in the country music um label groups um but um, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what it goes to, but it's kind of cool seeing that she is on the uh, chart right now at number 39. Um, but that's all we have this week for country music. But let's get into this week's pro series. Um, there's a company com- coming out in Pittsburgh, or it's already out, called Lux 10. Um, you can go check them out on the website or social media. But um, I talked to the two owners and the two um, creators uh, or founders, you want to call them, this week in an in-person episode of the Pro Series podcast that will come out this Tuesday. It's almost like if you think of uh, social media without social media. <laughs> and you'll understand that once you listen to the episode. But if you are a company that does not want to invest a lot of time into social media, because to do well on social media and have a good using as a great marketing tool, you have to be posting a lot. And I know small companies do not have the time, the manpower, or even the, um, yeah, or even someone to even post for them. Um, So this is a great tool for you. It is a good referral tool. It allows homeowners to create their own profile and kind of list all of their past um, painters, uh, electricians, plumbers, kitchen and bath renovation places. Um, And it allows you to pass it on to homeowners as well, which is a really cool thing. So if you're selling your house and you pass off your profile to the new homeowner, they know who Resol or um, fixed your water heater in 2019, or who did your deck in 2020? It's such a cool concept that I'm very surprised it wasn't done yet. And they say that in the episode as well. But they are in the industry as one is a real estate agent, one is in the mortgage world, um, and they saw this missing piece to the industry that we've been missing for a long time. And I think it is a great tool. Um, we'll talk more about it this week. So stay tuned for on Tuesday for the pro series episode with Lux 10, um, both of their owners. Um, but this week, that's all we have for, um, off topic. I hope you have a great St. Patrick's day. And again, head over to my social media, Eric Doman designs and on X it's Eric Doman DZN to look at the carousel of the breakdown of what I just talked about this week on luck and, um, basing someone's success off of luck. Um, Hope you liked this episode. Hope this helped someone. um, Send it to someone that maybe is struggling with that um, or if they think they're unlucky. um, This is a great episode for them to listen to. Um, Always send in your feedback, your topics that you want to listen to. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a great St. Patrick's Day and talk to you on Tuesday.